Do you suffer from getting far too much appreciation? <laughs> People coming up to you all the time saying, thank you so much for what you do. I so appreciate your efforts. You totally rock. Anyone? Mother Teresa once said that we are more starved for appreciation than we are for bread. And this is so true not only in our personal lives, but in our businesses as well. So you might be th sitting there thinking, well, who is this Lisa Ryan girl, and why does she go around the country talking about gratitude of all things? Don't we already know that? Well, in a 14-year stint of going to college, I was in a sales career. I sold everything from being an executive recruiter, where I'm one of the few people on the planet that can say they sold their mother. Mm -hmm. Mom hated that job, too. But, I, but I'm like, Mom, you have to be there for 90 days, I have a guarantee. She stayed two and a half years. It worked out OK. I was in the welding industry, and I have the burns to prove it, because yes, I actually could lay down a pretty nice bead. And then I had the pinnacle of my professional pursuits in medical sales. And I was at the top of my world calling on doctors and surgeons and selling surgical gloves, talking about exciting things like latex allergies. When I was invited to an organizational announcement, and on that call with 12 other people is when I discovered that my position was eliminated effective immediately. Please stay off the phone so our outplacement firm can call you and we're not going to answer any questions. You'll have to wait till you get your package from FedEx and then HR will call you. Goodbye. So as I'm sitting in my office crying, scared, not knowing what to do, I asked myself, what could I find to be grateful for? in this horrible situation. And my goal list that I wrote in 1989 popped into my head. I wrote it when I was six. <laughs> On that list was about 80 different items. The first one, buy a house, check did that. Second one, become a professional motivational speaker. Third one, write a book. So it was almost at that moment that I realized that goals that had been on my list for more than 20 years were finally able to come to fruition. And I knew that this was a message by taking and looking for the good, even in the most difficult situations, that would you agree with me is something that maybe corporations could use. It's the word thank you. And what are some of the responses that we normally hear when somebody says thank you? It was nothing. It was nothing. No problem. No problem. My pleasure. That's a good one. My pleasure is a good one. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just doing my job. When somebody says thank you, they are giving you a gift. When you take that gift and you say it was nothing, you're throwing that gift back at them. So the first activity that we're going to do is one I like to refer to as thank you, you're welcome. What this will look like is you will turn to the person sitting next to you. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, you're welcome. Three times switch. Thank you, you're welcome. Thank you, you're welcome. Turn to your neighbor person with the shortest hair goes first. And if it's a tie, make it up. All right, come on back. Did anybody notice that your, your welcome muscle may be a little rusty? She's good. She's, we <laughs> awesome. We Yay. So you're in good practice for doing that. Absolutely. But keep that in mind. It starts to focus on the awareness of the words that we say, and that translates into the corporate environment. And that's how we can implement five strategies to literally thank and grow rich. The T in thank, by the way, I'm an acronym girl. If there is a talk I'm doing, there's probably an acronym in there somewhere. It's the way that I process, and it makes it easy. But the T is for trust, building a foundation of trust. Because probably when you think about the good boss, it was somebody that you trusted, somebody that you were respected, 
Somebody that when they said something, you knew that it was going to happen, right? And then who's on the other side? The bad boss. And probably trust was not there. The first time, if you're starting to implement these practices in your organization, the first time that president looks at somebody and says, thank you, that employee might be saying, huh, wonder what he wants. We start to implement that one thank you at a time. So we build that foundation of trust and then the H, we help our employees to envision their career path with us. We want to take proactive steps instead of waiting till they're just turning in their two week notice. How do we help? How do we save you? How do we help you? No, you're looking at focusing on working with them, focusing on the results that they're getting and what they need, because if they're dealing with a sick child or they're dealing with taking care of elderly parents, maybe there's something that for the time being we need to create that win-win because our employees remember that. The A, of course, is my favorite step, is to applaud their efforts, to acknowledge the good that they are contributing to the mission of the organization. When you tell somebody you appreciate them, you create a beautiful memory. When you write it down, you create a treasure. So think today at some point of who it is that needs to hear from you. Maybe it's your spouse, your child, a coworker, your best friend. And take a thank you note. Take a piece of paper. Take a post-it note. And write that person specifically what it is about them that you treasure. In some of my longer workshops, when I have time, we actually do this exercise. And I had a woman come up to me afterwards. I saw her a couple days later, and she said, I just have to tell you what happened. I wrote this note to my husband. I left it on the counter. He picked it up, and he read it. He folded it. He put it in his wallet. Because she created tangible evidence of a time that she acknowledged him. And we can do the same thing in the workplace. The end to navigate work-life balance, because would you agree with me, or is it just me, that we are connected 24-7? The invention of the smartphone, the invention of the cell phone has blurred that line between being able to leave work at work and home at home. So how do we work with our people to, to navigate that work-life balance? And last, the K, we get to know them. We get to know them as people. In researching this talk, I put a question out on social media that said, how much do you think that your employer should know about you personally? The responses ranged from nothing all the way to, I want them to treat me as a person and know me as a person. So what is it that you can do in your organization to get to know people, to treat them as a valued part of the organization? and not just another employee number. When we look at the ways that we can create a culture of appreciation in the workplace, we can do that in five ways. Number one, we can focus on building that environment of trust. When we say something, we know it's going to get done. We can help our employees to envision their career path, being proactive and working with them to create that win-win. We can applaud their efforts, keeping in mind that it's wonderful to express to them specifically, because what gets recognized gets repeated. But when you write it down, you create a treasure. To navigate work-life balance, because face it, we don't have it anymore. To get to know them. When you do all this, you can truly thank and grow rich. And I appreciate all of you. Thank you.